Hi friends, um, I am back. I'm gonna try this one more time because I lost it. I did a video and it was pretty, pretty fruitful, but I gotta do it again because I lost it. So, such is life. So, what I'm going to talk about today, I'm gonna talk about two important topics, okay? First topic I'm gonna bring about, um, and you might wanna screenshot this or save it or save the point time frame when it occurred is that I'm going to talk about the concept of prices P R I C E S okay this is prices protect okay anytime you hear about uh, someone who may have been injured this is a method that you generally want to follow as far as injury is concerned Okay, just something acute, something minor. Uh, that does not mean you need to go in and do a full-fledged physical on this person, um, but do what you can. Okay, you want to protect, protect that area that is injured. Whether um, you might be treating something, an injury to the thorax, if you want to flip them over, um, if someone is going through nosebleeds, um, that type of thing. Uh, so you want to just protect that general area. Okay, you want to rest it. Um, that might include you sitting down the athlete ice it no matter what you hear everybody ice everything so uh, generally this helps to reduce inflammation okay compression all right so basically what compression means is that you want to um, is that you want to um, immobilize um, that area you, know, you want to make sure you want to put enough pressure on it to kind of keep it still and keep it stationary so healing can occur okay you want to elevate it you don't want to drop it down to where uh, or you don't want it to let it drop per se to you know which may allow blood to go into that area where it may not be necessarily re readily available for healing um, <clears throat> And you want to support, okay? You want to make sure you give the right support for that area. Um, especially, let's say, for example, with walking, you want to make sure that you want your athlete to be able to do the basic function of daily activity, and that's to walk. Um, so you might want to give them something that will support them while walking, maybe on an injury. Prices, okay? Something you might, might want to remember. I'll go real slow for you. One time for the one time. It's the slow notes for me. Okay, so what I'll do is that we'll talk about shoulder injuries. I'll be really brief um, because as I said, you know, people usually have, sorry, I'm just looking at messages. People really have short time, um, you know, it's kind of a short uh, time frame or attention span, attention span as far as videos are concerned. So I get it. I'll be really, really quick. I don't have my timer, but I'm watching the clock. Okay, so with your shoulder. <clears throat> Okay, you got a couple of bones that you want to remember. Okay, you have your humerus, you have your acromial, acromion, okay, you have your clavicle, and you have your scapula, what they call the shoulder blade. All right, so those are generally the kind of the basics and the foundation of what makes up your shoulder. Okay, um, get to be familiar with your bones and your shoulders as much as possible. It is critical in this particular area to recognize or understand the bones in this particular area, um, <clears throat> as specific for uh, injury, and as well as knowing what they look like, what the bones look like anteriorly and posteriorly, front and back. Okay, remember that. That might be a test question. All right, moving right along. All right, so your shoulder girdle, okay, is made up of your humerus, humerus, clavicle, and scapula, okay? So, um, again, we'll go a little deeper into the muscular um, makeup of the particular shoulder um, because it is a concept that I think it is very important for you to remember in relation to your um, rotator cuff, okay? Um, as you can see, the different ligaments that are listed. Um, now, it is, again, um, we'll go a little deeper, probably a little bit later, um, but right now, just for time purposes, and most of you guys are already in anatomy, um, I won't dig too deep into the ligaments, um, but it's very important for you to know and get familiar with them. Oftentimes, the ligaments are, are named based off of the location of where they are, which is why it's so important for you to get used to the bones. All right, so we talked about your rotator cuff, all right? So the best mnemonic device for remembering the muscles in your rotator cuff. The reason why it's easy for you to remember the um, this not the mnemonic device, ooh, if I could talk, um, is because essentially um, the insertion 
of the muscle, not the origin. The origin is the immovable part, but the insertion of this movable part of your muscle goes right around the region of the greater tubercle of the humerus, all right? And it's responsible for a, a good number, a, a good, different movements or a variety of movements rather, I should say, okay? It's responsible for flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction, all right? Remember those test questions. All right, so we're going back into the muscles. Your rotator cuff sits, okay? Just so, and that's how I've always remembered it. That's how um, most individuals who work with the rot rotator cuff in terms of uh, treating an injury or maybe working those muscles always remember this, okay? You have your supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, and your subscapularis. Those make up the sits muscles, okay, <clears throat> known as your rotator cuff. All right, so um, additionally, the muscles that also make up the shoulder is your deltoid, which kind of sits on it, kind of like a like a, a scully or a cap, as you know, scully is what they call it back east, um, but a cap is just something that you just kind of put over your head. It's kind of how the deltoid sits on the shoulder girdle, and of course, you have your biceps and your triceps, okay? All right, as I mentioned, um, it's so important for you to get familiar with the ligaments, primarily these two, um, because they are commonly injured, all right? So um, <clears throat> oftentimes uh, when you injure the um, acromioclavicular, a lot of times it's blunt force at the top. Anything that can occur where something may have fallen on someone or um, something may have fallen on them, or it could be a thing or a body, either of those two. Um, <clears throat> the same thing with the glenohumeral, all right? Um, very uh, generally, it could be blunt force, same thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's what usually causes like shoulder dislocation um, in reference to um, the actual bone coming out of the socket. And that's another thing I, for I almost forgot to mention. Boy, oh boy, I'm, I'm gonna get used to it. I'm trying to make sure I follow notes so I'm not talking y'all's head off. Um, remember that your shoulder is a ball and socket joint, okay? Um, we talked about joints before. If not, I'll do another review video on ball and socket, all right? Ball and socket joint, very movable. Okay, oof, I'm ashy. Very movable, okay, and there's a lot of movement there, but oftentimes with ball and socket joints, they're not that stable. This is the case for the shoulder, okay? It's a lot of movement that can happen in the shoulder, but not always stable. All right, so um, in the, uh, oh, no, I skipped the slide. Sorry, that's why I stayed in six notes. Um, we talked about bursa. We talked about bursa before. All right, so uh, we talked about bursa being shock absorbers for, um, but essentially for uh, muscles and bones, um, and that's the reason why when um, bursa it's constantly under pressure or constantly being used, that's where bursitis or inflammation of the bursa comes in. Okay, so your bursa um, generally is located basically within the name of whatever uh, or whatever the bursa is located. Okay, just know that sub S U B is a prefix that means below. Okay, so that's exactly what it is. Okay, and we'll talk about prefixes and suffixes later. Um, but knowing those two, knowing the difference between your prefixes prefixes and suffixes are important so you can know the location of what is what is going on. All right, so now back to shoulder injuries, okay? So um, one thing that does play a role in increasing the prevalence of a shoulder injury is posture, okay? As I, as you can see, I'm kind of leaning into the camera a little bit. Most of us are doing the same thing. We're kind of leaning into our computers. Uh, we're not sitting up tall. Of course, most of us are, you know, taking classes at home. So we're kind of slunched over, hunched over, looking at our laptops, our tablets, our phones. Um, but posture um, does make a difference uh, in terms of exposing that person to shoulder injuries. So um, <clears throat> it's very important to um, activate good posture, even as you're, you know, as we're home. Um, even though if you're not, you know, going to the gym regularly or not participating in sport this particular uh, season, um, you still want to activate good posture, not only because it's good for your shoulders, um, but essentially it passively helps with your abdominal muscles. So uh, always be mindful of that. Okay. Also, you want to be mindful of the population. 
okay um unfortunately the older we get we do kind of lose some function in our shoulder um, especially if it's not used often uh, so be mindful of our senior population who might be having some some um, shoulder issues all right so we talked about posture and this might help as you might be trying to do some ab work maybe passively who knows um, but you want to be able to keep your chest up and your shoulder blades back as I need to do now as I'm saying that for myself um, okay you don't want to just work the muscles that you can see in the mirror primary muscle that gets worked a lot deltoid bicep tricep okay and that's probably pretty much it all right and so um, I did post something up called throwers 10 um, not only is it good for those athletes who are either not in the season or in a pre or post season you just want to keep function going in your shoulders um, there's workouts there that are beneficial for all of the muscles in your shoulders all right so but as I said I talked about the muscles that you only see that's all deltoid we want to press our way all the time you want to do bicep curls you want to do tricep extensions all the time um, even those are even though those are good but those aren't the only muscles that make up your shoulder so be mindful of that all right so we talked about as i mentioned the throwers 10 program um, i have posted that on blackboard for you to look at and review and check out what throwers 10 is okay so important for you to um think about balancing the muscle groups i don't know about you guys but i have seen people overwork their shoulders and can't really do a lot of movement in it same thing with your chest um and back sometimes when you just overwork one thing it don't look good for everything else so just be very mindful to always be in balance um, with uh, in terms of your strength training okay if you want to work shoulders cool but probably do chest and back too all right so um, mostly most in most cases uh, swimmers and athletes are kind of wide open for a um, good number of shoulder injuries um, probably because of overuse so and when we talk about posture, what's good posture, what's bad posture, you'll notice that as you are activating your posture, your back starts to hurt a little bit or it's uncomfortable, probably because it's not a common movement, surprisingly. So once you get in the habit of practicing sitting up tall and engaging your shoulder blades um, and lifting up your chest, that's when the movement will, begin, will begin to be easier. All right, so sports um of course we love to play it some some of us love to play it um and i have a good number of football players in this class so uh, your first line of protection and preventing shoulder injuries is always your padding okay and it's so important for younger athletes especially those that might be 17 18 maybe 19 um you know there's still growth that needs to occur um, and it can occur in mostly males usually after 16 um, it usually stops give or take about 19 20 um, but <clears throat> having said that it's always important to be mindful of protecting your young athlete because again growth is still is still happening so you don't want to do anything or you don't want to um, protect or immobilize them or treat anything that's going to prevent growth in those bones all right so um, thinking about the bone injuries within the shoulders I know it's hard to believe that your clavicle as you can see right here um, is kind of a part of the shoulder but it, essentially it is so um, but that is a commonly injured area because generally when you injure the clavicle it kind of takes down in terms of treatment when you try to tie it down or not tie it down but you know compress it and put it in protective gear a lot of times it's a whole a whole thing that's kind of wrapping around the shoulder and supporting the shoulder um, <clears throat> we talked about um, epiphyseal fractures, uh, fractures in children, making sure that, um, yeah, that you're not stunting their growth or doing anything that's going to impact their growth. Um, and then you have an avulsion, which is pulling away um, of the glenoid or the acromion. All right, so now let's talk about subluxation and dislocation. All right, subluxation, you know, there's some flexibility. It can kind of go in and out. Um, it can go back on its own. Some people try to get the athlete to do it independently. I say either way, dislocation or subluxation, whatever the case may be, reach out to an MD and have or a medical doctor and have a medical doctor conduct putting it back 
in the the head of the humerus back into the um, the actual socket and we'll get, I'll go into detail about what the socket is but um, once it's a dislocation it kind of comes out and it's out alright so just make sure that you do not fix something that is dislocated alright um, because there is a possible um, a possibility that you could damage nerves so um, because there's a uh, there's a yeah I can't even get the words out. I've seen dislocations. Don't try to put it back in there. Don't do it. Unless you are professionally trained to be able to do it. Alright, so we talked about rotator cuffs. Um, usually pain with ab abduction. Um, remember what abduction is. Try it now try it now um, and prices as we said what prices was um, <clears throat> and generally rotator cuff strain impacts range of motion okay um, and we talked about the grades the first second and third um, you know what to do uh, based off of the grade it is um, and of course you know if it doesn't get better over time that's when you need to seek a medical professional All right, so impingement can happen. That impingement, if I could talk today, impingement can happen um, when there's excessive use um, of that particular area. Um, but that's mostly almost everything. We almost overuse everything. So, um, <coughs> okay. Uh, generally, with impingement, um, you do want to modify, change, or reduce your exercises. Uh, adapt the concept of prices and think about posture. Okay. Anytime there's impingement going on, so um, so just be mindful of that. All right, so you got biceps tendonitis. What do we say itis was? Say it to yourself. Just say it to yourself. I know you don't want to. Just say it to yourself. What is itis? Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, tendon may feel like it has crepitus, which is basically all that crunching. All right. And if ruptured, athlete cannot flex the elbow. All right. So it might be a little bulge there. All right, so we're not going to talk too much about thoracic outlet syndrome, um, but feel free to maybe pinpoint it as a journal article. Hint, 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 hint. All right, so now let's talk about dislocation. Let me show you a video about dislocation, and then we'll be done. Okay, my friends, don't do that, okay? But if you feel like you have done it before and you can, by all means, do so at your own risk. Um, don't risk injury to your nerves, um, and which can further damage use of the arm and shoulder. So, um, But if you have any questions, let me know, um, and I'll see you soon. Peace.